In this video, I will walk you through a Riemann sum problem that is similar to the ones that you might find on an AP Calculus exam. f is a continuous differentiable function that is increasing and concave down for all real x. Values of f of x at specific x coordinates are given in the table below. Part A. Use a trapezoidal sum and the three subintervals indicated in the table to approximate the integral of f of x from 2 to 8. Trapezoidal sum means that we are using sideways trapezoids like this one to estimate the area under the curve. Remember that the formula for the area of a trapezoid is 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times height. And for a sideways trapezoid like this one, base 1 is right here on the left, and base 2 is here on the right. The height is actually the width of the sideways trapezoid. They said to use the three subintervals indicated in the table. So one subinterval will be from 2 to 5, another will be from 5 to 6, and another will be from 6 to 8. We will find the area of three trapezoids, one for each interval, and add them up to approximate the area under this curve. Let's start with the interval from 2 to 5. Notice that both bases are touching the curve. Therefore, the height of base 1 will just be the value of the function at 2. So I see that the value of the function at 2 is 1. So this is base 1. Base 2 will just be the value of the function at 5. So this is base 2. To calculate the area of this trapezoid, I'm going to do 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. Base 1 plus base 2 is 12. And the height of a trapezoid is the distance between the bases, which is the width of this interval. And that's 3. Next, consider the interval from 5 to 6. Base 1 will be the value of the function at 5 which is 11, and base 2 will be the value of the function at 6, and that's 13. Therefore, base 1 plus base 2 is 24, and the width is 1. That's the width of the interval. Now take a look at the interval from 6 to 8. Base 1 will be the value of the function at 6, which is 13, and base 2 will be the value of the function at 8 which is 15. Therefore, base 1 plus base 2 is 28. And then the height, which is the width of the interval, is 2. I strongly recommend leaving your answer in this form so you don't risk making a careless mistake on the simplification and losing points. However, this does simplify to 58. Part B is the approximation described in Part A greater than or less than the exact value of the integral of f of x from 2 to 8. Give a reason for your answer. Looking at our little sketch, you can probably tell that the approximation is less than the actual area under the curve. If you make a bigger trapezoid, it makes it more obvious that the trapezoid is leaving out some of the area under the curve. So definitely the approximation is less than the exact value. But why? What's the justification? Here are some notes I need you to memorize in order to answer questions about whether a Riemann sum is an overestimate or an underestimate. For the left or right rectangle methods, often abbreviated LRAM or RRAM, it depends on whether the function is increasing or decreasing. So your justification will be uh, because the function is increasing or because the function is decreasing. For the other two methods, MRAM stands for midpoint rectangle approximation 
and TSAM stands for Trapezoidal Sum Approximation Method. For either of these two methods, your justification will be based on the concavity of the function. So in this case, uh, we are doing trapezoidal sum. So our justification will be based on the concavity. So the approximation is less than the exact value because f of x is concave down for all x. And by the way, I drew the picture as concave down because in the setup, they told us that f of x is concave down for all real x. Part C, use your approximation from part A to approximate the integral from two to eight of three plus f of x dx. When you have the integral of a sum, you are allowed to integrate term by term. So we can split this up into the integral of three plus the integral of f of x. The integral of f of x from two to eight is what we just approximated. So the second term will end up being 58. So we just have to evaluate the first term. And uh, the antiderivative of three is three x. So we just need to evaluate this using the limits of integration. This means uh, find the value at eight minus the value at two. Don't forget the plus 58. So here's the value at 8 minus the value at 2 plus 58. You could leave your answer like this, or you could put 76. Part D, use a right-sided Riemann sum and the three subintervals indicated in the table to approximate the integral of f of x from 2 to 8. For a right-sided Riemann sum, we estimate the area under the curve using rectangles that touch the curve on the right-hand side, like this. The area of a rectangle is just base times height. The base of the rectangle is just the width of the interval. So considering the interval from two to five, the base is three. Now, what about the height? Since the right side of the rectangle is touching the curve, then the height of the rectangle will be the value of the function at 5. And that's 11. Now look at the interval from 5 to 6. The base of this rectangle will just be 1. Again, the height of the rectangle will be the value of the function on the right-hand side. So the value of the function at 6. In this case, that is 13. Now look at the interval from 6 to 8. The base of this rectangle is 2. The height of the rectangle is the value of the function on the right-hand side, so the value of the function at 8, which is 15. You can feel free to leave your answer like this, or you can put 76. Part E, is the approximation described in Part D greater than or less than the exact value of the integral from two to eight of f of x dx? Give a reason for your answer. From our sketch, we can tell that the approximation is going to be more than the exact value. Notice that each rectangle is including some extra area that is not actually under the curve. However, for the justification, we need to rely on the information that I told you to memorize. When we are dealing with a left or right rectangle approximation, the justification will be based on whether or not the function is increasing or decreasing. And for this problem, we have a right-sided Riemann sum. So this is a right rectangle, so therefore, uh, we will base our justification on whether the function is increasing or decreasing. In this case, we were told that the function is increasing for all values of x. So we will say because f of x is increasing always. 
By the way, the reason why I know that f of x is increasing always is because in the setup of the problem, we were told that f of x is increasing and concave down for all real x.